thank you for the introduction, Violet. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, C for giving us the honor to tell her story. So thank you, Violet. Thank you, Eric, for having us here. Um, so uh, we are Steamhead. And as uh, Violet said, we are uh, not for profit. Um, and our goal is to make relevant education accessible. Um, and we'll, throughout this whole talk, we will dissect what that means. Um, how we do that is we work with communities and uh, groups, teachers, parents, uh, students, um, and we help them reach their goals, what their community or learning space needs, uh, mainly through science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and um, through the maker mindset and project-based learning. Uh, before we move forward, though, I want to step a little bit, a step back, um, and kind of explain why making relevant education accessible is uh, very meaningful and purposeful for James and I. So I grew up in San Francisco, California, um, in an immigrant neighborhood. Uh, access is was key. Uh, because my parents were immigrants and they didn't speak English well, um, having access to the system inhibited us, our family, from moving forward. And because I was in an immigrant neighborhood, I went to public school. And resources and access to books, we had to share books. Sometimes some of my classes I actually had to sit on the floor. Um, resources weren't very accessible to us kids in that neighborhood. Um, so access is very important to us. And for James, he did grow up in California as well, in a very, very small, unincorporated town um, that does, doesn't even really have a name. And access, not having access looked different to him. His graduating class had about a thousand students. Only seven students went to high school, um, college, university. And why is that? Um, James was one of the ones that didn't make it to university. Uh, there was no college counselor. Uh, he didn't know what classes, like what even like majors he had to take or could take. Um, and he, you know, fun story, you can ask him later, he actually had to hitchhike his way to um, visit the university he ended up going to. Um, so with Steamhead, uh, we uh, are sustainable, we try to sustain ourselves through the seeding model. So meaning, think about a dandelion. You know, when you blow it, the seeds kind of go out in the wind and it propagates itself. So, um, at the center really is Steamhead, but really Steamhead is just a hub. Um, our values, what we do, uh, is propagated in many of different organizations and communities. So here are some of the organizations and communities that we're currently working with. Uh, Shenzhen American International School, the first school in Shenzhen to have a makerspace, and they have a very strong maker mindset program. Currently, I'm working with High Tech High in San Diego. Um, a lot of the stuff that uh, we have developed in Shenzhen, I am developing over at High Tech High for them. Um, and James is at International School of Nanshan, Shenzhen, uh, you know, integrating tech for that community. And we don't just work with individual communities, sometimes we want to bring those communities together. And these communities do want to come together. So Make Fashion EDU is a platform that brings um, different organizations and schools together and they put on a fashion tech runway show annually. Um, not just here in Shenzhen, but it's also spread out to California and Canada. And then very proud school maker fair. Um, if you guys have time, next Sunday, no, next Saturday, Next Saturday, uh, the School Maker Fair will be hosted at the Sea World Arts and Culture Center, um, focusing just on the kids, and this will be the fifth School Maker Fair in Shenzhen. Okay. So, you know, we're, we're talking about sustainability, but I want, I feel like we should stop and think about what sustainability actually means, or what it means to us before we move forward. The dictionary definition says, uh, to sustain is the ability to be maintained or kept going. Well, this begs the question, what are we maintaining? And what are we trying to keep going? Um, so for us at Steamhead, um, that you know, centers around the goal of making relevant education accessible. So, so really 
what sustainability means to us is to have real, really defined goals, right? You don't know what you're sustaining or maintaining if you don't know what your goals are. And for us, we have realized that achieving goals uh, requires continuous course corrections, right? You have your philosophy, you have your vision, but our actions need to be constantly revised and uh, so that our goals remain true. The environment for a lot of things are complex and things change a lot, but our visions don't. So the choices we make and what we try, choices we do and the actions we take need to be continuously course corrected. Um, and sustainability is not about being static. So we'll, we'll t bring you through a couple of our course corrections because I think those are very important um, to our growth or any organization that is trying to sustain itself. So how can we define success? I have a picture of the Taobao Maker Festival up here because it looked really successful and there was a lot of product sales that happened and uh, we could measure its success by some traditional analytics. Um, Carrie and I are both from uh, downtown San Francisco working for very large companies and so we have looked at KPIs, at company success metrics, both for the companies that we were at but also for our own individual projects, the very formal reporting structures. And uh, when we started a nonprofit, um, we took that experience and we would look at our success month to month, or project to project, year to year, based off of these, these metrics, looking at profitability, um, how much money you've got uh, to deliver to your shareholders, looking at your company goals and making sure that your vision is aligned year over year. Um, specialization. I mean, a company's core competency, what, what value they add to their product that they take to the market, and year-over-year uh, year growth. When we first started looking at these, um, we looked at them with our Silicon Valley eyes, and, uh, and over the years, we've come to make some significant course corrections. If you want to take a look at a couple of those with me now. So the first one, again, um, goals, right? We have to have goals to know where we're going. Um, you know, the average company will use market size or profitability as a metric to, to measure success. Are you reaching your goals? You know, how many locations do you have and how much money do you make? Um, so with us, we kind of shifted our perspective with that a little bit with Steamhead. Uh, we learned that bigger was not better. Um, when we first started out, uh, you know, started out with teacher meetups. Uh, a lot of teachers wanted to get more into maker education or um, try to find ways to make education more relevant in their class spaces. So we got together and every month it got bigger and bigger, you know, to a point where it was maybe a couple of hundred people at these meetups. Um, and it was cool. We're the, you know, cool kids in, in town. Everybody was talking and we were getting together. But as we stopped and looked, um, bigger didn't, something felt wrong. Bigger wasn't better because all of us educators getting together, we had a good time talking, but we were there to improve the classroom for our students. And not a lot of impact was happening after these meetups. <coughs> and so, you know, our time is finite. So James and I decided to kind of think about this in course correct. And so what we did was we decided to just identify, use our time more a little bit more wisely. We identified change makers and teachers, educators, and parents that really, really wanted to make change um, and were willing to spend the time to do it. And so this picture that you have here is our first year of doing Make Fashion in UVU. It was probably around nine or 10 schools. We worked with nine uh, teachers from those nine and 10 schools. Uh, and what, and they worked with their students in creating fashion tech to tell a story. And um, using a community partner, Design Society, they were able to exhibit their fashion tech, um, you know, down a runway for a night. And this has become an annual thing. But just by shifting our perspective and refocusing and making it smaller actually had greater impact. This was, you know, in many cases, three to six months of work for these teachers and students. Um, and it was only working with up to maybe 20 teachers versus having these meetups where 
100 people will come and nothing changes in the class the next day. Um, so, uh, relevant and impactful goals. So, bigger is not always better for us. Um, profitability. Um, this one, James will talk about a little bit more. Uh, we found that, um, you know, money is necessi necessary, right? It's a necessity to sustain yourself. However, um, how you take that funding speaks a lot to uh, an organization or what kind of values you give up when you partner up. So we found uh, another way to be profitable, I guess, profitable in the way that it is impactful and relevant for our kids, and it's not necessarily always monetary. Yeah, profitability. Um, so when we first uh, started teaching classes, we looked at the costs of the classes and the revenue that they would uh, bring in kids or parents paying for workshops. And uh, we would line up all of our events and all of our months and years and uh, look at these indicators. And, uh, and that was useful, that we'd learned to do that in big companies and that we could apply that to our day-to-day -day activities. Uh, but what we found was that a lot of the most impactful events, once we had them all lined up, uh, didn't have the biggest profits. It actually didn't have the biggest costs. It wasn't that we were spending too much to have two good events. Um, and they didn't have big revenues. Uh, our biggest events didn't have a lot of money trading hands. Events where there was the most resources that looked the most beautiful and that had biggest impacts finally on the kids. Um, so what we found was that um, we, we needed to start measuring the value of exchanges that didn't occur with money. So we call these, we call these uh, in-kind exchanges. And uh, at, the, at the main fashion event that you just saw, all the teachers that brought those students to the runway, they taught their kids in their classrooms using their techniques and resources. Uh, we did provide kind of a lot of content to help those people uh, do their work with the kids. But we didn't charge money for that and we didn't provide them specific services. When we had the event, people brought a lot of content and projects to the event. We had a lot of volunteers, but we also had a lot of people bringing in maybe paid classes from somewhere else to exhibit. I think the Maker Fair really represents that. People working on their own bringing value to the event. There's a lot of in-kind exchanges um, happening here. So we needed to start measuring that in Microsoft Excel. And uh, that was a big course correction that would be a big change in how we were thinking about the numbers that we were typing into our spreadsheets. Um, we were looking at the numbers that we were typing for our specializations. And uh, at first, that was our ability to teach complex concepts to kids, uh, to make it fun or easy to understand and relatable. And that was a really good skill to have. Um, but what we found was that uh, using it wasn't hitting our, our high level goals. We were getting some of those classes with, with costs and revenues associated to them. And uh, we could repeat those as much as we liked um, but they weren't adding meaning and purpose to the students' lives, which is where we were trying to aim in the first place. So uh, instead we found that technology is useful as a tool, not as a goal for itself. And um, so previously I would have some 3D printer lesson plans. Uh, if I wanted to be nonprofit, I thought, oh, I should help other people teach kids uh, how, to, how to use 3D printers. Um, but now I'm looking more at uh, integration. Um, why would a student use a 3D printer? Uh, actually, 3D printing something can take you about five minutes. If you go online, download a model, send it to the printer, uh, it's easy. If the equipment's set up, it's pretty simple. Um, and my lesson plans had to be elongated initially to add more technical expertise into it to give the customer some value for what they were paying for. Um, instead, I found that uh, history teachers 
love to know about 3D printing. If students are researching topics or presenting things, students in primary and secondary school, they can use 3D modeling or 3D printing to enrich their presentations to others. So I had a student um, just last month that did a presentation on waterways, and he built um, a 3D library, of, uh, he built a 3D museum that he walked people through and showed them different artifacts of water pumps and water systems in the world. He didn't learn 3D modeling for the purposes of learning 3D modeling. He learned it to enhance his academic history presentation. And so our, our specialization has shifted from technical capabilities to, to making sure that we're always good at adding meaning and purpose into these lessons and into these integrations. Um, another key performance indicator for companies is growth, right? Um, McDonald's, locations all over the world, Starbucks, locations all over the world. Um, we shifted our perspective on how we want growth. Um, we want growth through agency and advocacy. And what that means is whoever the community, whoever we work with, or the communities that we work with, uh, agency, we want them to have agency, that they can do it independently without us. And then they can then move forward and advocate for what they believe in. Um, we don't want 10 locations. We don't want to be a centralized hub or a corporate office. Uh, for example, this picture here, um, we're working with the Boys and Girls Club in California, in a small, small city called um, Yucca Valley in, in, in California. And the Bro Boys and Girls Club is an organization that's also a nonprofit that serves um, underserved youth. So um, this was us, I think, our first year. And these kits, actually, that you see here were donated by MG Space. Um, and uh, the kids wanted to do electronics. So we went there and taught them some electronics and got their hands on it. And we've been going back every year. The second year we went back, the kids didn't do much more with electronics. I mean, we only saw them one time in the year. And that wasn't very, like, you know, wasn't really giving them advocacy or, or agency to grow or sustain their passion or curiosity for electronics, which they had no access to. Um, so what we did that second year, after we brought a bunch of electronics from Shenzhen to the Girls and Boys Club, was we talked to uh, um, homeschools, parents that ran homeschools in the area, and we got them to come into the Boys and Girls Club to work with the kids. And the year after that, when we came, uh, they had a thriving club community of parents interacting with the students of the, the kids of the Boys and Girls Club. And yes, we still support them, you know, with uh, um, giving them resources and some support here and there and words of encouragement. But that particular community there is thriving on its own um, without us. And for us, that's growth. That is propagation of mindset and values moving forward so that they can do so themselves. Uh, so uh, let's look at, uh, we've talked a lot about how we measure or aligning to our goals. Um, we have two goals right now. We try to get it down to one. Um, but we feel like we do two things. One is publishing. By, by sharing stories of hardships and triumphs with educators and a public audience, um, we, we encourage that mindset. And when we publish uh, in a large format, like a book, we show the students that their projects are being looked at by, by real people. So our Make Fashion EDU student designers have actually made some really beautiful stuff. And when we put them on a professional runway and make a book and an Instagram account about it, those students understand, oh, this is not a rehearsal. This is, this is real. People are looking at the work that you're doing and they're having an emotional reaction to it. And so, so that leads into our events mission is to have those runway shows where students can present the work and do the work, to have physical events. Um, one of the things that I like most about the Maker Fair is that we get to see um, other people interacting over projects. I get to see uh, an engineer and a parent or a child 
share particular joy in, in how a robotic cat uh, moves, or maybe some interest in the circuitry. So by observing those little uh, human interactions, it puts me more in touch with the, with the community. I'm not just reading about uh, the values of design creativity or listening to a presentation, um, but I'm actually experiencing something real. So we're about out of time, but to, to summarize, sustainability, it is very, very important if you are an organization or if you're just a person with goals. Um, but make sure you know what you're trying to sustain. Be very clear about what you're trying to maintain and propagate. And, um, and for us, you know, we know we have succeeded in sustaining is when those communities that interact with us do not need us anymore and they can move forward themselves. Um, well, thank you for your time. And this is how you can find us if you want to find us. Yeah, and the work of all of our students and uh, the great media people that help put us stuff, put our stuff online.